So it is a multi-layered industry that we are in, literally and figuratively, and we're going to be talking about going from layer two to layer three and making it composable and scalable. And let me introduce uh, intern Dave Uranak, Eric McMartin, Pierre Dupolin, Christian Calderon, and Steve Lee, the moderator, everybody. Put your hands together. Come on out, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. I think 25 minutes is pretty short uh, for these five talented people to share things. Uh, so I'll just go to straight. Um, let's start with a quick intro for each. Um, I'm Steve Lee. I work for Block Tower Capital. We are a crypto investment firm since 2017. We invest in both public market and private market. But on private, we are pretty active in, in the gaming space, NFT, X Infinite, Dapper, Super Rare. YGG, League of Kingdoms, play that. Uh, uh, Mr. Choi was a uh, previous session. So we're pretty active in the space. Hi there, I'm Dave Yornak. I'm the Director of Ecosystem Development at Tron. And at Tron, we're really a diversified Web3 company. And as part of that, we uh, have a variety of um, NFT games that we're developing and that we already have, as well as a gaming platform called wink.org. Um, where you can play uh, probably 300 or so different uh, gambling games. So. Uh, hello, I'm Eric McMartin. Um, I'm a Twitch partner uh, with the name Savage Studios, and I've been playing uh, NFT games for about a year now, starting with like Axie Infinity, Nifty League, um, playing big time right now, and I'm just focusing on growing a uh, NFT community for gamers and helping onboard the process. And just excited to be here talking with these awesome people next to me. Hi, uh, I'm Pierre Dupin. I'm a software developer at Sora, uh, which I joined uh, a bit more uh, three years ago, a bit more than three years ago. Uh, so I'm in charge of like doing blockchain integration and all of that, basically. Hey everyone, Christian Calderon, CEO of Game Jam. Uh, I'm a game developer, I've been making games for about 10 years. I've worked on games like 2048, Two Dots, um, and at Game Jam we have a game with DJ Marshmallow called Marshmallow Music Dance, and uh, last year we transitioned into Web3. Great, um, by the way, I just assigned as moderator just before this, so excuse me if the, the um, um, things are a little clumsy, but I will start with the Pierre. So. Uh, sorry, not Pierre, but uh, Christian. Oh, Christian. So Christian basically worked in Web2 gaming industry before this. He's a Web3 uh, game. So as an investor, I have a huge thesis about Web2 traditional gaming company trying to make something in Web3. I'm talking to a lot of Japanese, South Korean gaming company who are trying to get into crypto space. So I think it's a big thesis. So I want to ask you, the Chris specifically, what do you th uh, think about the biggest challenge for you as a Web2 game designer to build a Web3 gaming? And then how do you s see, view the, this kind of a transition as a view? How, what kind of difference you make uh, versus Web3 versus Web2 game? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, I think there's a few challenges. Uh, one is the, the market's quite small. So I'm, I'm used to making games that have uh, hundreds of millions of downloads, or billions of downloads in, in the portfolio of games that I worked on. And in Web3, there's uh, you know, maybe single digit millions of daily active uh, gamers. So it's quite a small market compared to Web2 gaming. Um, that being said, I think it presents uh, exciting opportunity for understanding how to onboard users and how to grow the market. But I think that is the, probably the biggest challenge for all Web3 developers at the moment. Thank you. So next part uh, that I want to go to Pierre. So Pierre is working for Sorare as a game soft uh, engineer, uh, if I correct. So Sorare, if you guys don't know, one of the largest uh, sort of um, the company in NFT gaming space is a, a fantasy game that they are building on Web3. So they did a successfully a few fundraising last year. Congrats. And then now I'll ask maybe related to the subject. 
So as a developer for SoRare, you should have certain uh, scale scalability issues or challenges. Can you iterate about what you experience as a SoRare developer and how you reserve it or how you are reserving it? Yeah, so I mean, there's what we say in blockchain is don't trust verify, right? Um, so that means every transaction is verified by every node in the network. The more decentralized the network, the more nodes you have, and that creates a lot of overhead. Um, so this means that like L1 can scale up to a certain amount, right? But then you need to move out of L1 uh, to be able to do more transaction and basically bundle them and then send them to L1 as a basically batch of transactions. Um, so what we do is we use uh, what we call a layer two. Uh, it's a ZK rollup. It's a kind of a technical term, but it allows you to, you know, make lots of trades, compress them, and then only uh, submit that to the main chain, which could be Ethereum or any other layer one, only like once every eight hours or something like that. So this allows you uh, multiple things. Being on a layer two allows us to be isolated from the other projects on the layer one. So if, for instance, I don't know, Bored Ape makes a drop or a DeFi project is super active, we are not like uh, blocked by those transactions. And we, so we are on our own environment. We master like the gas fees. We know exactly how much we're going to pay. And the fact is that today, like our cost, transaction costs are not correlated to the number of transactions we do. We can do 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 transactions and we pay the same amount of uh, fees. So, I mean, our, um, we want to bring you know, uh, our game to mainstream, and that means lots of transactions, and that's how we do it. I think we can come back to scaling talk uh, if we have time more, but as if I make a one comment, um, after an uh, unfortunate incident with the Terra, I think a lot of uh, game projects are looking for uh, what are the best alternative layer one they have to go to. So as an investor, I see a lot of migration of the, the gaming projects are moving between the layer one and layer two. Some people are preferring ZK rollup, or some people going to Polygon, some people go to Avalanche, and some people go to Solana. But every layer one, layer two has their own pro and cons, and we can talk about it later if we have more time. So next question, I want to go to uh, Eric. <laughs> so Eric is so important as an investor because even though we talked about a lot of technology and such, if the, there's no one playing the game, what's the point? I think um, I, as an investor, uh, play to earn by XA Infinity is very meaningful and revolutionary because they opened the new era of what the play to earn can. But they are not considered as just fun, fun, fun game. So at the same time, we are looking for a very fun game that makes people addicted to playing. So I think that what uh, Eric does is a reflection of what the real gamers are interested in. So I will ask the Eric the question. Uh, uh, you can put your personal bias, but y if you can share a few games that you play, what you like, what you didn't like as a gamers, and how you view uh, this existing NFT games or future of the NFT game you want to have as a player? Uh, yeah, so I started playing uh, Axie Infinity last year when I realized um, that you could play games to earn money. And it kind of like opened this uh, concept up in my, in my mind that, uh, you know, if I outplay my opponents in Axie Infinity, uh, I can win a dollar, you know. And every five minutes, if I win a dollar, you know, $60 an hour, that's, you know, not bad for a, a few hours of playing video games. So uh, I was doing that. And, and then when I realized that the pay to earn ecosystem of uh, just printing money doesn't exactly sustain itself for very long, I realized that there's more to NFTs and games than just earning money, earning crypto. Um, so I started looking to other games, like constantly researching. So I looked into uh, Nifty League is one that where you own your NFT and, and it becomes an uh, asset that you own. And Big Time is another one where basically you're farming for skins, cosmetics. NFTs could be cosmetics. So they actually just become a part of your account and you can sell them on a marketplace instead of this concept of pay to earn. Uh, did you share how many followers you have on Twitch uh, when you introduced? Oh, yeah, I just have like 12,000 followers yeah, on yeah, Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, if you don't follow, please follow him. And that's, that may Thank be actually the real players, what they're interested in is going to be foreseen a uh, symbol for the, what the public market cryptocurrency might do for a particular game project, because they're real traction. So maybe I can go to Dave. So Dave, uh, I just got to know him just one minute ago, <laughs> but he works a lot with uh, the projects and ecosystem and at Tron. So I think he got to see a lot of different projects and then different type of projects. Um, so I don't know what to ask, but maybe I ask this because it's uh, NFT related. What kind of projects, NFT projects that you interact with the most? And then what are kind of trend you see on this NFT projects? What you personally like among them? Uh, sure. So I, I as uh, working in ecosystem development, I do see a lot of new companies, emerging companies, um, trying to get up and running. And within, you know, I focus on really DeFi, NFT, GameFi, and Metaverse and bringing companies on board in those areas. And there's a lot of overlap, of course, between GameFi and NFT. Um, and first, in terms of play to earn gaming, I think that's going to be something that really uh, can change the world. And you're starting to see it happen now a bit um, with people in impoverished countries really having a source of income that wasn't possible before to them. Um, and play to earn gaming is, is doing that. And there's companies that are funding gamers um, to play these games and then you know, getting, working on some type of arrangement of um, the winnings for them, which is much better than they can earn otherwise. Um, but we are seeing a lot of NFT games, but, you know, in the NFT space, what concerns me is the adoption among the current gaming community. So I think it's like among 18 to 34 year olds, uh, it's, it's like 16 or 60 percent of them either don't want to play an NFT game or don't know what an NFT game is. Right. So how, how do we bridge that gap from. I don't want to do that because it, it sucks or whatever, um, to having the real hardcore gaming community want to participate in NFT games. And so that's you know one of the questions that I wrestle with and try to figure out um, and try to advise and help the companies we're bringing on board try to solve that issue. So I don't know if anyone here has any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think it was really similar to when free to play first came out, like originally developers were used to making paid games and they wanted to make paid games and there was when free to play first came it was like a kind of a slow movement and then there was like a watershed moment where like a 90 percent plus of the games are free to play um and also like with hyper casual games i don't know if you like a lot of developers didn't want to make hyper casual games and then in like 2016 hyper casual made up like 60 percent of all gaming downloads in the market and so there was just this like watershed moment where boom, it just happened. And I feel like it'll happen like that with Web3 games. I don't know, that's just my feeling. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, maybe if I can add to that. So I think it's interesting, you have to, in your game, to basically show why your NFT is better than a Web2 game. Um, so if I speak of Sora, right? So it's a fantasy game. Uh, like usually fantasy games, uh, you basically do a season, right? So you draft your players at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, it's done, right? And you reset next year. With Sora, like, you build your squad uh, over time, right? And in the, in the summer, you're gonna trade players, preparing for a new season, like your real manager. And maybe you're gonna play two years, three years, 10 years. And at the end of the day, when you wanna leave, you're just gonna be able to sell what you've been building for years. So that's like how you show, uh, you know, the utility of NFTs and why it's, you know, mo more powerful than Web2. I think we can talk about utility after that. I think we have a good time. But one comment I want to make about free play. So as an investor, uh, everyone has a different opinion. But now I'm recently very interested in free to play, not just play to earn. So play to earn is their own basket. I, I think it's evolving. But the main reason why we don't have a more adoption in gaming space in crypto because the game should be more fun, funnier or more fun. 
So to do that, I think if you start with the play to earn model, there is so much pain that you have to make this token economics and end game fun at the same time. I heard, because I'm not a designer developer, so I don't know, but at least I heard the huge pain because you want to make a play to earn game, you have to sacrifice a lot of a developer's capacity to make the game fun. So in that case, why don't we just also have in integrate this uh, good part of the free to play model that is already proven in Web2 industry? Maybe start with the free, uh, uh, free to play, it's a better quality of game, and then you can integrate an NFT on top of it on the later stage of the game as a more reward and bonus point someone mentioned earlier. So I think that's something, another basket I recently looking more. I'm still looking at the play to earn game, but I free to model star with the amazing quality game. It does slight twitch on NFT. That might be also, I think, could be new trend. So back to utility, we have a six more minutes. Can I comment on uh, that? Please. So uh, I like the idea of making games more fun, but I think it's hard to predict what's going to be considered fun. Right, I think, you know, who would have thought Minecraft would have been fun, you know, prior to it coming out and having such massive adoption. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a big challenge is understanding, you know, what the public and what people were going to like, mm -hmm. and I think that means that you have to try a lot of different things and create a wide number of games or a large number of games and see what really kind of what is adopted. I think uh, my point, though, was it's not about outcome. It's about because if you do want to play to earn, I feel like developers are limited from expand using their capacity to build a game. But it's okay. debatable. Okay. Um, so utility. Uh, I think a lot of people looking for additional new utility other than play to earn or game. So maybe this might be slightly non-game talk, but what are things that you guys are look for or you think that is most feasible utility of the NFT other than gaming asset? I, I think the biggest one for me is the introduction of the wallet address. Prior to having a wallet address in games, we were looking at device IDs or IDFAs or AIDs. We had no idea about the user. Now with the wallet address, when a user comes into the game, I can index that wallet and I can know, you know exactly how much money they have on that wallet if they interacted with other contracts for other games. And you have a, a picture of that user before they even start playing your game. We've never been able to do this before in gaming. So I think it's, for me, you can offer great utility through the product by understanding more about the user and having smart offers or contextual offers. Um, for the gaming product itself. There's other uh, things that you can do with a wallet address, right? Like with the marketing and analytics and data science and all of these things I think can improve the game and the user experience um, and make the games more fun. Anyone else? Other utility that you are excited to look for from it, NFT? Uh, sure, I, I think gaming is one sector that utilizes NFTs and I think there are many other sectors that do. In fact. By the way, I'm giving a talk on the adoption of consumer adoption of NFTs tomorrow, if you are free. Um, but yeah, there, there are so many industries that can leverage NFTs that, that gaming is, gaming was the first adopter, one of the first adopters, but we're going to see much wider spread adoption of NFTs. And you're already beginning to see it from Wall Street to Main Street to fashion, and really a wide range of industries. I mean, look at healthcare. Health, within healthcare, there must be at least 20 different use cases for NFTs already. Um, so uh, we're just getting started with NFTs. That's why I, I, I couldn't be less concerned about the fall off in NFT sales that we're, that's going on because NFTs are definitely here to stay. Gotcha. For me, I think um, I want to make two comments. So for me, utility that I'm looking, not I'm looking for, but I, I think it's feasible to apply is Music, gaming assets, identity, and then physical redeemable, which means that if you have a Nike NFT, go to Nike store, you get a 50% discount or something. And also, lastly, I think this is the biggest market, but it's gonna be it's gonna be taking a long time. It's gonna be financial application of NFT. So uh, NFT combined with the financial part is. Uh, some, some, many people say that in the world, uh, most of the assets that we see is a non fungible. So which means that all the non-fungible asset in our world can be NFT'd. 
So that can interact with the other financial part and something. That's something that I'm interested in. And the second point I want to make is to your point, wallet address. So I think this is related to digital footprint, some people call it. So in, without this blockchain technology, uh, with the blockchain technology, so if I play the XA Infinity, I use the Abe. Uh, if I use something else, if it, this my digital footprint can be recorded in blockchain, then that's my credit score, which means that your credit score is real, and then no one can manipulate that. If as a service provider or business uh, company, if you know the what kind of the digital credit history you have. I can do marketing better, I can do make a product better, I can customize whatever service better. So I think uh, to your point, I'm, I, that's why I'm very also excited about this sort of footprint uh, uh, related to credit score, which can relate it to, this is a sensitive word, but under collateralized uh, the, um, the borrowing that can be possible in, in crypto space. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, it's debate, debatable if it's good or bad, right? I mean, like yeah. digital footprint, like now we have Web2 puts a lot of regulation around privacy data and like blockchain is about transparency, but that's one of uh, the problem with blockchain adoption is also privacy. I mean, you don't necessarily want everyone to know what you did in the past. so. Yeah, this is also something, I mean, it goes both ways and we'll have to find solutions about privacy. I know like, so zero knowledge proofs uh, is like one of the solutions, uh, but yeah, I think it's important and it's gonna be. Definitely. Yeah, I think it's, it's key to have the, the user own their information and be in control of who sees, who sees their credit score, right? And what, what's done with it. Um, I think it's a very slippery slope when, if that were to be opened up and government could have access to it without asking. Uh, last uh, 28 seconds, so I'll go to Eric. Do you have any last word to the builders who's building NFT game? Do you want to say any like a comment so that yeah, uh, for them? Yeah, just focus on the fun first, you know, and then uh, fun first. Fun first, yes. And if you have any game you want me to try out, I would love to play it. Sounds love good. It. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Please follow these uh, brilliant, talented people on Twitter. Click them and then follow them. Thank you, guys. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. Fun first, indeed. Expanding upon that theme, we're going to be talking about designing for quality NFTs in games. We have a gentleman coming up who knows what he's talking about deep rich experience in the gaming industry. Please put your hands together 